Hey guys, Jeremy here and this time I'm out at the beautiful Northern Rivers in New South Wales uh, and we're retrofitting a hemp house. So here I am on site and we can see down here a shed that has been retrofitted with hempcrete walls, which is really interesting. And here is the house that we are retrofitting with hempcrete walls. So the hempcrete herd is all stacked up here. We have the mixer and the lime and the sand over here and then here are some walls that we formed up yesterday and filled up and as i move through the site we can see here is the filled up hemp creek cavities so looking forward to doing some reveals today to see how the hemp creek has come up but as this is the second build from this owner builder we feel we're gonna have a really good result as these reveals happen. Some of the hemp herd that comes from Southern Queensland, so not very far from here. Very few material miles on this. And it comes in these bags and it's one bag of this and one bag of lime binder with some water. And that's what the hemp herd looks like. The hemp herd has a really high silica content and once it's been coated with water and the lime mixed in, it really sticks together really nice and forms these crunches like this. As long as you're getting a ball similar to that, then that's what you need because it's all just going to stick together inside the wall and then it's going to cure and form up and dry and eventually petrify and turn into stone over 100 years. So this whole process consumes a lot of carbon. So we're locking in carbon into these walls for a good couple of hundred years and then it's recyclable at the end of it so essentially the carbon is locked into this house forever so here we have adam adam abbott he's an environmental scientist and a hempcrete home builder and uh, he's just going to have a little bit of a chat about the hemp that we've been working with go Hi. for it yeah thanks um well this is this is hemp and you can I, I love this stuff. It's, it's the best building material I've ever worked with. Uh, I've done a lot of research into different types of building. Uh, I looked into straw bale and went and helped out on a straw bale home. I've looked at mud brick and spoken to people about mud brick. I've also uh, looked at earth ships and went and looked at a couple of earth ships. And by far for me, hemp won out hands down. You walk into it, it's like a, a warm hug of a house. It, it encompasses you, it breathes with you. You feel amazing when you walk into a hemp house. And my house that I built a few years back, um, everyone who comes in there just is amazed. They, you just see the look on their face is, where am I? What's happened? And it's, it's, it's a lovely feeling because the hemp, it, it breathes, it regulates the humidity. My house, my house in, uh, up at Corumban there, it has one fan in it for the whole summer. And we get, you know, weeks of 30 plus degree temperatures and it's thermodynamically stable. It, it just really is a beautiful place to live. Um, you, the acoustics in there are sensational. There's no, there's no bouncing of sounds around the building. There's, there's a, just an, a, a, that absorption of the sound. So it, it, it just feels like you're talking into a pillow. The house, the house is lovely, yeah, and you, you can't, you can't beat it. It's the best plant on the planet. <laughs> you can eat it, you can build with it. We can make plastics with it now, or plastics. And I, I would say, look into building a hemp house because you won't regret it. So, as an environmental scientist, yeah. I mean, you're qualified to say these things. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. You know, you, you you've studied the science behind it, yeah. and then built the house as well. Yeah. Um, and then working with other builders uh, like Damien here. Um, and uh, yeah, so thanks so much for your insight. Uh, it's great to hear from someone that, you know, understands it deeply um, and has worked with it as well. So thanks a lot. Cheers. Thanks. So there's a full bag of the hemp herd going into the paddle mixer, courtesy of Johnny. Here's Johnny. Now we're gonna wet it all down a little bit. He knows exactly how much water he's adding. Here comes the bucket of water. So that's all going to coat the hempcrete herd nicely and dampen it, wet it down. So 
There's the buckets going into the wall that we've formed up. The empty buckets coming back. How many litres of water, Johnny? There's a couple of factors to think about when adding water to your mix. There are different kinds of hempcrete mixes. Now we're going to go for the lime, correct? There's the lime binder. So the lime binder is, you've got to be a little bit careful with it. It's a little bit dusty, a little bit caustic. It's not going to kill you, but it's nice to use a mask, gloves, a fan. That's all gently mixing in. So it's a lime binder with perhaps three or four percent cement, just to increase that stick. You can see this guy's a mix master. As you can see. This is the sand going in. We got washed river sand. It's nice and clean, nice and dry. It's not gonna add too much extra moisture to the mix. Coarse, clean river sand. So at this stage we could add some hempcrete that has fallen out back in there, 10% extra, 10% used hempcrete that might have fallen out on the ground and you swept up. But we're quite neat on our processes today. Now we're going to do a little squeeze test. How's that squeeze going for you boys? Uh, that squeeze is going gorgeously. Uh, Look at that. You want that to hold. You mm -hmm. want that to hold when you do a little jump jump. Nice. Are right, we ready for action? Alright, we're going into the buckets. Those buckets can come over here and they're poured into the walls and are being tamped down. Now Damien's had the amazing idea to do 1200 lifts on the first two, which Talk saves us a bunch of time. On our last job we did 600 lifts and uh, one of the things we learned is that perform work is probably the most labour intensive. It's obviously very important to get the finish right for form work, but um, I believe that if you've got the right length of tamping tools and the right setup, you can do 1200. Lifts, which is what we've been doing on this project, and so far it's working well. So, show us how long it is. I mean, your tamper. The tamper's probably around about. A bit shorter than that one. Yeah, so that's kind of, that's just over 1200, but you can probably make it a metre or 1100, it'll be fine in terms of getting down inside. Nice. The first run was easy, just around the ground. The second run was a bit harder because you're up on a deck or a scaffold or a, a trellis. Um, but yeah. By using the 1200 board, it means you're getting less joints. So if you're leaving a hempcrete um, bare and you're not putting a line plaster over it or not coating it, it means you've got less joints for the form work. So this is a neater hook. It's obviously less labour by putting up a bigger sheet rather than lots of smaller sheets. Form wall. I'm extreme DIYer who's brought some birthday magic to the job. <laughs> Thank you, Jezza. No worries. <laughs> Here's an example of ramping up. So, as we're really close to the roof cavity, trying to sneak it into the top gets harder and harder. So, we've got a, a roof, a pitch there, which 
leaves us a bit more room to work over this side. But over this side, it's gonna be very hard to put the handfuls of hemp over the side. So we've ramped it up on one side and done as much as we can on that side. And then I'll whack the formwork board up there and then just have to handful it in over the top of this rafter here, which will be a challenge, but we'll get there. It's actually quite hot today, so higher in the roof you go, the hotter it is, but uh, it's all part of the show, folks, it's all part of the show. Here's the first wall we did using the 1200 sheet at the bottom and at the top and a 300 at the top uh, joined for the ceiling. And you can see this line is barely visible. There's a slight line there between the two different kinds of boards we use, but we don't mind that. Uh, but the compression is done really nicely. So we're using these 45 mil width campers, uh, which means we get a really good pressure on the outside. And that's our intention to get a really hard pressure on the outside. So it has a nice clean look, a nice clean finish because it's all going to be exposed. There's no lime render or any kind of cladding or anything. Uh, it's an internal wall. Uh, so the idea was to have a, a really nice hard tamp on the outside and then a softer tamp on the inside to let it be fluffy and let it be insulative uh, and, and sound absorbing and all the other wonderful things that hemp is. Um, but um, also to have a nice hard finish on the outside. Now, so this was exposed. We, we, we built this wall on Monday. It's now Friday. It was exposed on Tuesday. We can already see that's really starting to harden up. Um, so there's hardly any flakiness at all. Um, it's really like uh, the, the softness is, is not there anymore. It's really starting to get a lot of hardness to it. And over the next five years, it'll actually petrify and slowly turn into stone over the next hundred years, a sort of lime, hemp, stone. And so this house, while it was built with different components, the hemp creep, the hemp, the lime and the water which make the hemp creek. We also added some uh, coarse washed river sand as well. Uh, those four components uh, are gradually gonna turn into the one solid lime hemp creek wall.